On my travels in Bali, one of the best chicken curries I ever tried was in Ubud, a brilliant Indonesian chicken curry that is booming with all sorts of flavors and spices. And it starts off by making up the most incredible spice paste you will ever make. So we're gonna get it into a food processor with some palm sugar to start with for a little bit of sweetness. We've got some shrimp paste, a very astringent and salty flavor here, but it really makes the basis of this curry. To that, we're adding some fresh turmeric, which is nicely peeled, some garlic, some ginger, a little bit of cashew nut. Now, in Indonesia, candle nut is used quite often, but cashew nuts are a good substitute. I'm going to add shallots, whole, popped in here. I'm going to add a chili, which I just have to slice off. I'm going to bruise up some lemongrass, just take the bottoms and the ends off it, and then using the back of the knife, just give it a good bash up. So this bruised kind of core, which smells just so divine, is going to be broken up in alongside these other ingredients, as well as a tomato, because what would a curry paste be without a tomato? In Indonesia, of course. So our tomato goes in for a little bit of aromatic spice. We've got some coriander seeds. So about a teaspoon's amount goes in here, and then half a teaspoon of cumin seeds. This curry is so worthwhile making. Please go and get the ingredients, commit to this. It is gonna be an absolute winner. Now, lid goes on, and we're just gonna blitz this up until nice and smooth. Okay, it sounds like I've just turned off a lawnmower, but it's all blitzed up and nice and smooth. And look at this paste, it is incredible. As soon as the spice paste is made, this recipe comes together quite quickly. So I have a pan on, a wok over a high heat, and I'm gonna add a little touch of oil in here, about a tablespoon or so. And the reason I'm adding the oil is to fry off that aromatic spice paste just until it becomes really fragrant. And with any sort of wok cooking, it is essential that your wok comes up to a really high temperature. We've got a nice smoking hot wok. It's time to get sizzling. Oh yeah. That is the sizzle you need for a superb Indonesian curry. And it only takes a minute or two just for those flavors to marry together in the pan. Okay, this is looking pretty good now. Now this is some chicken breast being added in here. And to this, we're gonna go in there with some veggies. So I have some butternut squash just peeled and diced. And you wanna give this a good stir through to start coating that chicken and that squash all in that lovely spice paste. And just, I mean, if you could smell, if I could give the smell to you right now, I would, but I can't because it's the camera, and you can't get the camera smell. Anyway, you know what I mean? It just smells really good. Okay. This is coming together quite nicely. I'm not really worried about browning it off too much because this is gonna cook and stew down. I'm gonna add in some tamarind paste. Now, this is an interesting one. It has sort of a, a tangy, sort of sweet taste. A little bit of sour acidity as well. This goes straight in here alongside some water. Now, that tamarind paste is well worth seeking out because it just adds a depth of flavor to dishes like this that you just wouldn't get with, you know, lemon juice or lime juice, because obviously it's a different ingredient, but it's the sort of thing I would end up substituting if I didn't have it. I'm just gonna bring this up to a nice simmering point, and while it comes up, I wanna add even more fragrance, more lemongrass. I'm just gonna bend this and break it into nice little pieces like this. Really great fragrance from that is gonna be imparted into this stew. And then I've got two bay leaves and some lime leaves, which I'm just gonna pick in here. You've got that curry paste, that dry heat from the spices, and then you have these sorts of fragrant elements from the bay leaf and the lime leaves and the lemongrass. This now needs to cook down for about 15 to 20 minutes, just until the liquid has reduced a little bit, and the chicken and butternut squash are just about cooked through. Okay, this chicken curry has had about 20 minutes or so, and I've been adding a little bit of water where necessary, because as it reduces down, it does need a tiny touch more liquid. And now to finish it off, because it's pretty much in a good place right now, I'm gonna turn down the heat and just slowly add in about half a can of coconut milk. So the trick with coconut milk is to slowly add it 
and mix as you go just to ensure that it doesn't split and do make sure that your heat is down at a low temperature. So I'm just going to let this simmer away now for another five minutes just to intensify that flavour and to reduce it down a slight little touch and then it's time to serve it up with some rice. Just look at that colour. I mean, it's that turmeric, that fresh turmeric that results in that wicked orange colour. The last thing to do is finish it off with my favourite herb of all time, which is a touch of coriander. You don't have to add this if you don't want, but just look at that contrast of greens and oranges. And now, after all that work in the wok, it is time to try this beauty. Look at that. Mmm. Oh. Oh man, like I know there's a lot of ingredients that have gone in here, but it is so worthwhile. Those extra touches, the shrimp paste, the tamarind, they really add to a finished curry that is like absolutely no other. It is an Indonesian curry inspired by my trip to Bali. I hope you'll like it and I hope you'll give it a go. The link is in the box below to get the recipe. And of course, like this video, subscribe to the channel and comment in the box below if you're from Indonesia, where are my Indonesians at? And I'll see you soon. Goodbye. Now, a, spa a space paste? It's not a space paste, it's a spice paste. Now, a space... <laughs> and I'll see you soon. Until then, enjoy this chicken curry, and I'll see you soon, okay? Okay, bye.